All right, so we're gonna learn how to work with tabs. I think tabs are pretty essential and used quite often. So we're gonna learn how to use them here. Now what a tab is, if you go to an object, in this case, I'm gonna use the sign as my dummy over here. If you go into the component section and you add a common component, you'll see there's a tab option. And this is a tab. The tab is an option that you can click on. And when you click on it, you can trigger something to happen. And we're gonna go over how to do this. So what I want to do in this case is I want, when I click on this tab, I want this box, this cube to just be destroyed. Very simple. So the thing I want to explain about tabs first is that tabs have two parts to them. They have a client side and they have a server side. So the tab initially exists on the client, right? It's something that only the character sees, that you see, the player sees, right? It's something that appears on your screen. And all the node graphs that are attached to a tab are on the client side. They're all client node graphs. But Whenever you click on a tab, whenever you interact with it, then it sends a signal to the server and lets it know that it has been triggered, that it has been interacted with, and then the server will react and then you can use an event to do some server logic. So I'm going to go over this in more detail in just a second. First off, we have to actually set up a tab. So in this case, I want the tab to live on the sign. Now let's go ahead and go into advanced editing and you'll see right away that we have our tab and we have this blue box that appears. So this is actually a hitbox. This is the area where if the player walks into this, you're gonna see this tab appear. If the player is not within this radius, within this uh, collision box, then you're not gonna see this tab. So let's go ahead first of all and edit the trigger option area. We see here that there are three different options. Your usual suspects here, cuboid, sphere, and capsule. I'm just gonna go with cuboid, which is just a square or a rectangle and we have to reposition it so let's go ahead and make sure that this actually uh, fits around the sign pretty well i'm going to give it a y value of one let's say and let's give it a zoom multiplier on the uh, y axis maybe oh, that's too little let's give it a two so there we go it covers the sign as far as the height and then let's do the same thing like a 1.5 on the x and a 1.5 on the z okay so now if you walk up directly to the sign We'll see, I actually, let's just give them a little more room. Let's just do two on each. Sure, just for the sake of example. So if you walk inside this box, then this tab will appear. Okay, so that's pretty self-explanatory. If we go into the tab list, this is where all our tabs actually live. Let's go over what everything is. So first of all, we have a tab ID, which is one. Now, every entity that you put tabs on, it's always gonna start at one. So if I put a tab on this cube, that tab is gonna have an ID of one as well. So that's just something to know. It's not like every tab in the game has its own ID. It's dependent on what the tab is placed on. So let's look at all the settings here. You have the icon, which you can change to whatever picture is available. You have the name of the tab. So in my case, I'm gonna, I'm gonna name this something like destroy. And there is a word limit to this. Like if you see, if I try to put in cube or uh, destroy object, let's say, you see that it kind of cuts off here. It doesn't let me type anymore. So I'll just do destroy cube. And then you'll see that that's the text that displays on the option here on the tab. Initially effective, you can turn this on or off and you can set this through the uh, node graph. There's an option for this. But for my case, I just want to keep it initially effective so that it's just always on. For sort level, this is useful if you have multiple tabs so for example if i have here test tab then you'll see here that the sort level is both one and so it just renders it in order but if i have a higher sort level than this one let's say two you'll see that it appears on top so if i had like 10 different tabs here with all different sorting levels the ones with the higher sorting levels will appear on top first now as far as the local filters so there's two different options we have boolean filter and integer filter now how a boolean filter works is you actually have to put in a node graph in here, into here, and that node graph will put out a boolean value. It's going to be a true or a false, a yes or a no. And if it gets to a yes, then the player is going to be able to interact with this tab. It's going to show up. However, if it shows no, then the player won't see the tab. And of course, it only runs the logic once the player walks into the trigger area inside the box. So the player is going to walk in, it's going to run a node graph and it's going to, with whatever logic you want, if the logic ends up being a true, then the player will be able to see it. So we're going to go over this in a second. I just want to explain what integer filter is. So for integers, it's the same thing. Whatever, your no, whatever integer your node graph puts out, if it's within this integer filter list, then the player will see it. 
So you can see here that I can put the number one, for example, I could put the number two here. So as an example, you can maybe try and see what faction the player belongs to. If he belongs to faction one, then it'll be allowed. If he belongs to faction two, then it's allowed. But if it's a faction three player, then since it's not here, then the player is not going to be able to interact with the tab. So, okay, we're going to go ahead and use the Boolean filter here, for example. Now, if you don't use a Boolean filter, then everyone is just going to be able to see this and there's going to be no issues. But if you specifically want some kind of a filter, you can click to select and you'll see that there's a tab here called Boolean filter node graph. And you can go into whatever folders you have and create something. In my case, I have here a Boolean faction filter. So let's go ahead and check this out. If you go in the client node graph, resource explorer inside the boolean now this is this is important it specifically has to be in the boolean filter node graph because the node graphs that live in this folder only have access to certain nodes that pertain to boolean return values whereas the integers also there are all nodes that return integers so you know in our case since we want this to be a boolean filter we have to do this in the boolean folder so i already have one here called boolean faction filter and how this works is very simple we get the target entity. Now, what is the target entity? The target entity for a tab is always going to be the thing that enters the trigger area. In our case, it's going to most likely be a player. And if I put this into a query entity faction, it's going to give me a faction. And that's usually just going to be a number. It's going to be of type faction, but it comes out to a number like one, two or whatever. So I'm going to compare it to see if the player is in the first faction. And this equal is going to just compare this to this. And it's going to say, yes, it's true or no, it's false. And it's going to output to the node graph end node. Now this node exists on all the node graphs that you make inside of the Boolean filter. Okay, so this exists always, it's always here. And it's gonna return the Boolean that you plug into it. So let's go ahead and plug this in. If I click on this right here and select my Boolean faction filter, you'll see that it gets added. And let's just go ahead and quickly check because I was messing around with factions earlier. So let's select this to everyone. Okay, so now player one, which is me, is gonna be part of this initial player faction with an ID of one. Now this ID is what the query entity faction is going to put out. It's going to give me one. So what's going to happen here is you see, I walk up to it and the tab displays. Now you're not going to see any text here because I'm not level three creator. Uh, you can help me get level three by playing the level in the description if you live in the NA servers. But uh, <laughs> anyway, you see that walking up to the sign uh, shows me the uh, tab. And if I click on it, nothing's going to happen because it's not connected to anything. But at least you can see that I can interact with it. If we go back into stage settings and I get rid of player one, and instead I put player one into this faction with an ID of two, then what's going to happen is this query entity faction will return two. It'll compare if two equals one, and it's going to say no. And in that case, I'm not going to be able to even interact with the tab. So you see that if I walk up to the sign, nothing shows up. Now, okay, I'm going to show you guys how to do an integer filter. So let's go ahead and put in an integer of one over here and two over here. So you see that this list contains both values. And if we go ahead and select our node graph here in the integer section, I have an integer faction filter. And then here we're basically getting the target entity. We're getting the player entity that it belongs to. And we're checking the faction custom variable here which on my player, you'll see that I added a custom variable called faction with a value of one. And so this variable value is gonna output into here, which expects an integer, which is why the uh, type is integer. And since it outputs a value of one, it's gonna allow me to interact with this uh, tab because one is part of the filter list here. And so you can see if I walk in, there we go. It allows me to interact with it and click it and whatever. However, if I go back in here and I change this value to three, which is not in the list, you'll see that walking up doesn't allow me to interact with the tab. Okay, so now that we know how this more or less works, I'm gonna just remove the node graph so that it just always allows me to use it. Okay, so now we actually want something to happen when we click on a tab, right? So we wanna listen on the server. There's a node that listens to all the tab interactions on the object, on the entity that the tab is attached to. And so when that event triggers, we want to destroy this object specifically, right? So let's go ahead on this sign and add a node graph. I have one called destroy object. Let's go ahead and check it out. And you can see it's pretty simple. When the tab is selected, 
we get the tab ID and we just compare to make sure that it's the tab with the tab ID of one. Now this is just best practice. In my case, it doesn't really matter since there's only one tab on the road sign. It's not gonna have another value than one. But if you have multiple, you obviously wanna control which tab is allowing you to do certain logic because you might wanna have different tabs do different things, right? So in my case, I'm just comparing to see that it's the tab with the ID of one. If it's true, then I'm going to use this yes branch and I'm going to destroy an entity and I'm going to pass in the GUID of that cube right here and it should just destroy it. So let's go ahead and test this out. All right, so let's go ahead and walk up here. Let's click it and there we go. Our cube got destroyed and we're able to interact with this just because we don't have a node graph that's filtering anything. It's just automatically on. Now, if you wanted to do some more complex work and if you go into the, let's go back into here real quick. If you wanted to do something more complex and you see how there's an initially effective to off. So let's say I want something to happen. Like let's say I want to kill this hilly churl. And if I kill this hilly churl, then I want this to uh, be active. This tab, I want to be effective. What you can do is uh, however you want to do it, it doesn't matter you know, what you want to do, what logic you want to run. But basically, if you go back in here on the server, if you type in tab, you'll see that there's a node here called activate and disable tab. And it's in here that you can pass in the uh, target entity that has the tab. So in my case, it would be the sign. I would pass the sign in here. And then I would give the tab ID that I want to activate and then I can click on no to disable it and yes to activate it. Very simple, very easy.